Well, what's in the water? Is it just a coincidence uh, that the three Anglo-Saxon nations that stole continents from local inhabitants and acquired vast stretches of land for pillage are the very ones that have the highest acceptable limit for glyphosate in drinking water, namely USA, Canada and Australia? The difference in the maximum allowable limit between these countries and Europe is not marginal, but an order of dimension higher. Anyhow, how did I come across this data and why do I consider this to be relevant from my point of view now that I am visiting India? Well, the data was apparently compiled by the government of Bermuda and I got it from the US scientist Don Huber who sent me, passed me his PowerPoint presentation uh, with a few slides to do with glyphosate. Uh, he did it in case I wish to use any of it in my talks in India. Well, India is not in the above chart. However, I suspect that a billion and more folks are getting mass poisoned in slow motion through imported pulses grown in two of the countries in this chart, namely Canada and Australia. I have been involved in getting the Canadian government to test large samples of food locally grown and imported for glyphosate and then to give me the copies, give me copies of all the results. Thus, I have seen firsthand how toxic foods are when grown in Canada, USA and Australia, foods such as lentils and chickpea. I believe the maximum allowable limit of glyphosate in drinking water is so high in these countries because the existing levels have already gone high. Therefore, the governments, I believe, have continued to raise the bar, making these higher levels acceptable. This is what happens when levels of toxic substances go up. <clears throat> governments do not declare the food or the water to be unsafe. Rather, they raise the bar so that at, from that point on, higher levels of toxins are still considered safe. My biggest gripe is that the government never provides direct proof with raw data that such levels of glyphosate are safe for animals eating or drinking them on a regular basis. The relevance and link between toxicity in drinking water and crops grown in those regions come indirectly. What is happening to their drinking water is not by accident nor by act of God. High levels of glyphosate is being used in agriculture. That is how lentils and chickpea get so much glyphosate in them. Then what does not get into the crops gets into the agriculture runoff into streams, lakes and groundwater. Eventually it gets into the drinking water. Anyhow, another country that is not in the above chart but plays an increasing role in sending possibly toxic pulses to India is Myanmar. I have not seen any test results on glyphosate in pulses grown there which are imported by India. However, I am told that the method used to grow these pulses there are industrial models borrowed from the West and that Myanmar has started buying a lot of glyphosate for the purpose of growing pulses for India. I am told that the Indian government may be encouraging Indian agro-industries to buy land in Myanmar to grow pulses for India. People need to have these pulses tested for glyphosate too and compare the readings with those of USA, Canada and Australia as against those grown locally in India. Indians are likely getting poisoned through their lentils and chickpea and they deserve to know the results. India, the largest consumer and producer of pulses, sadly cannot meet local demand anymore. India's agricultural lands are getting less productive as years go by thanks to wrong agriculture policies. This is the business end of decades-old and faulty decision taken towards a much-hyped green revolution where hybrid seeds and heavy chemical use in agriculture was introduced 
in the name of progress based on fraudulent science. This started the steady and relentless degradation of the soil, loss of indigenous varieties and knowledge, as well as disappearing water table from excessive irrigation. There used to be a popular saying about computer systems and software, garbage in, garbage out. I believe this also applies in India's blind adoption of Western industrial scale agriculture models that are designed to sell more chemicals instead of fine-tuning locally developed sustainable and time-proven organic methods. Although I have not seen the statistics, I have seen evidence of a rising tide of autoimmune diseases coupled with problems with digestive systems in India from people eating these foods as well as those growing them. I suspect mass poisoning has started and would love to see detailed testing on data on this. People of India absolutely need to force their government at all levels to start testing their seed-based foods, especially those that are imported from Canada and Australia, and let people know the results. There should be demand that the proof of safety of glyphosate in these foods be made available for citizens and people people be allowed to scrutinize them as well as conduct independent verification. Without disclosure of any proof of safety, approving this substance and feeding the thus contaminated food to the people may amount to eco-terrorism. The fault, however, lies at the feet of the people. In a functioning democracy, we cannot blame the government and its politicians. People deserve the government it gets. The buck stops at our feet. Want to know who is, whose fault it is? Look no further than the nearest mirror. Thanks.